And I'm definitely coming through that vibration called hip hop, of course. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. And I, I then, then you, now, I know you've done some training before. Have you done this presentation or a version of it before? Because I thought I saw some of it before. Well, some, and, and you're absolutely correct. Some of what I, I, I talk about, I've been talking about the fingerprint of God, the gate of God, um, the God particle. I've dropped tidbits in certain lectures, because you know how sometimes you just got to drop it? Yes. Drop the seed and expose. And so I decided to kind of go back through my lectures and get all of that information consolidated into one solid hour so I can open up for Professor Small. Okay. All right. And we know Professor Small, man, is a brilliant brother. That's one of my teachers, man. That's, I've interviewed him a number of times. And that's a, he's a very humble brother, very gracious brother, and very knowledgeable also. So um, I think it's going to be a uh, dynamic event. Um, I know we're coming up here on a break. So we're going to talk about some more of this on the other side of the break and find out why is this topic right now in 2015? We're going to deal with this on the other side of the break. You listen to the Michael M. Hotep show on the Empowerment Radio Network. We're speaking with the one and only Professor Griff. We'll be back in a few minutes. Welcome back to the Michael M. Hotep show on the Empowerment Radio Network where knowledge is power. All right, that's some soul to soul for you. Back to life, back to reality. Uh, visit our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. We have the information for tonight's show posted right there. You can share that on your own Facebook page and invite your friends to tune in. We're speaking with the one and only Professor Griff, um, and we're talking about um, his uh, upcoming presentation coming up Saturday, February 14th in Atlanta. All right, now, um, Griff, right before the break, we were talking about uh, the, um, the God ascension, the God frequency, and uh, I wanted to find out from you, why do you think this type of topic and this presentation that you're going to do, why do you want it right now in 2015? I think it's very important and very timely, simply because in all of that going on in the world, especially with young people, especially with police brutality, especially with um, artists coming and confusing people about gender, um, mm. uh, <laughs> politics, uh, politicians, <laughs> politician um, wavering with no damn backbone, as Minister Farrakhan said, with no testicular fortitude to there even make go. decisions when it comes to our people. I think this is very, very important simply because the last thing that we feel that we can reach for, which should be the first thing, is God. And that's what our people, that's what our people do just by nature. Yes. And we, we, and we to understand, so what we want to do is be able to tear up the whole idea and the whole concept of God. So when we reach for the God, we got to make sure we ain't reaching for the wrong God. Right. <laughs> you exactly. know what I'm saying? So very Absolutely. Timely, and we need to get the young people to understand to clear up, to clear up these, um, these misnomers. Especially the information that was left to us by Dr. George G. M. James and, mm -hmm. and other people and other scholars. Yeah, stolen legacy, George G. M. James, absolutely. Right. Um, you, you you mentioned you mentioned you, you hit on something, man. I want to uh, ask your opinion of this. Um, I, I you you may not have seen the Super Bowl, but you may have heard about it. But the okay. back in two thousand four, back in two thousand four when Janet Jackson performed at the Super Bowl with Justin Timberlake, um, you had the quote-unquote wardrobe malfunction, right? And then people at like, pe she, she was basically blackballed, scorned, ridiculed, called every type of name, and they said that this was a family event and how could something like this happen? Even the Federal Communications Commissioner at the time, if I remember correctly, he was the son of Colin Powell. He made statements about it and talking about him seeing this and it, and watching the Super Bowl with his son. Okay, now Sunday night, Katy Perry performed. And one of the songs she performed was I Kissed a Girl and I Liked It. I didn't hear any fallout from this. I didn't hear anybody criticize the song or anything like that at a quote-unquote family event. And I, I, I don't know if you heard anything about this or, or what have you, but... I, I, I just find that I just find that amazing that here you have an accident that happened and then Janet Jackson is basically 
ridiculed and blackballed and scorned, and here you have a woman performing a song, I Kissed a Girl and I Liked It, and nobody says anything. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, when, when we talk about it being a family event, Mm -hmm. Because our family don't necessarily do some of the things that their family actually does. <laughs> um, they are preparing programs mm -hmm. that they want our family to watch, i.e. Scandal, i.e. Empire, i.e. Right. some of these programs, all right? Yes. What yes. they want to do is safeguard their children, but our children can wallow in the muck and in the mind and the filth and the, degrada the degradation of people, so-called black successful artists, uh, coming on the small screen, coming on the small screen, disrespecting not only the black family, but the black mother, definitely the black father, and ultimately uh, designed uh, and geared towards destroying the black child so the black child will never uh, grow up in a healthy environment. As long as that boob tube is on in public, it was a song called She Watched Channel Zero. And we geared that song, we geared that song towards women sitting home watching the boob tube, absorbing that same madness. And here we are, damn near 20 years later, and black women are doing the same thing. So that's the Katy Perry. Mm -hmm. This poor excuse of an artist <laughs> performed at the Super Bowl. I kissed the girl and I liked it. Well, that's what they do in their natural behavior. <laughs> right, okay. White people by nature are homosexual. They don't mind laying down with animal dogs and pets and all this kind of madness. And then okay. they got the nerve to get Charles Barkley one and the rest of these cats, and we just kind of fall in line. But I think mm. not. that should not be our behavior. If that's what they want to do, then fine, let them do that. That, that's family, that's family entertainment for them. Right, okay. <laughs> I got you. All right. Um, now, I just I just found the whole thing, like, really, really interesting. But then when Missy Elliott came out and performed, it's like people thought, some people thought Missy was a new artist, but that's a whole nother conversation. I'm like, uh, this is unbelievable, but anyway. Well, that's, that, that's that new generation that just don't really know too much. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but uh, let me back up for a minute. What was the name of that song again that you said uh, you and Public Enemy did uh, about uh, uh, she she watches the boob tube? What's the name of that song? No, she, she watches she watch Channel Zero. She watches she, she watches Channel Zero. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm checking because I, I still I still have some of my Public Enemy CDs, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna look out for that one. She watched Channel Zero, and that's exactly what we're doing today, huh? You might want to do the Michael M. Hotel remix or something, man. But yeah, it's there. <laughs> Absolutely, but that's exactly what's going on. Scan uh, scandal, being Mary Jane, love and hip hop, all this, all this not empire, all this programming. Absolutely. Um, now, w with your w with your presentation that's coming up Saturday, February fourteenth, um, when I, and I've seen some aspects of this presentation that you that you've done some 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 um segments of it that you've dropped when we sometimes when we talk about god and we deal with and we have people coming from different religious backgrounds coming to the presentations sometimes that's a could be a touchy subject for some people but um how do you explain it in a way that the average person can can really get it and get the essence of it? I, I think, well, and that's a very good question, but I think I do it in such a way where, you know, I appeal to the base core of an individual's um, um, thing. Mm -hmm. And what I, what I try to do is give basic examples of uh, things that happen in nature. When we talk about God, the Creator, Yah, Pata, Yah, Allah, any of these particular terms, right. all right, these indigenous terms. Of course, you and I both know, because you and I had this conversation, that there's over 1,000 languages on the African continent. Right. So we call, and call on God. Um, we rarely say Jesus. Now mm -hmm. we do, because right. we've been far removed. So the question <laughs> should be asked, how many African gods do we pray to? Right. Well, which African God? 
pardon me, wrong question. Which African god do we pray to? And you can't find too many black Americans that are here in America, and if they've been born and raised in America, you can't find them here in America or abroad that can answer that question honestly and say, and give you the name of they pray to. We pray to a God that's been given to us, our open enemy. Mm-hmm. So I take it from the base, basic, I take it from the basic concept of what people think God is. But a lot of times, I got to go back through the brainwashing process. I got to go back through the poison book to come out of the Bible and use the Bible as a revolutionary tool to do some brainwashing. Now, people may say, well, damn, you're brainwashing people? Well, obviously, we've been brainwashed because right. I, I also have to, this, this, this uh, uh, unnatural language and this unnatural tongue called the English language in order to speak through a poison book in order to reach black people who've been brainwashed. That's a job in and of itself. <laughs> and to talk about, just to talk about a concept that's, uh, that's um, uh, a lot deeper than the average conversation that you're going to have at the bus stop or the water cooler at work and try to get black people to understand. So, yeah, I, you know, I got to show images. I got to play videos. I got to do whatever it is I got to do. Anything that's at my disposal, I got to use to reach the people. Absolutely. Use those tools at hand. Definitely understand that. And uh, we're coming up on a break. Uh, on the other side of the break, we're going to continue this discussion. Um, and, and, and one thing that I explain to people is that when you share this type of information with people, it has to be out of love. It can't be out of a, uh, out of a sense of trying to put people down or make people feel ignorant and things like this. It has to be genuinely out of love for black people, love for African people. You know, so I think that's something uh, extremely important. And, and when you're genuine with it, people can, even if they disagree with you, they can feel your genuineness, and that will cause them, you know, to go do some research. Absolutely. Okay, um, we're going to continue this on the other side of the break, Griff. Uh, you listen to the Michael M. Hotep show on the Palmer Radio Network, where knowledge is power. We're speaking with the one and only Professor Griff. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right, welcome back to the Michael M. Hotep Show on the Apartment Radio Network, where knowledge is power. That's some classic public enemy. Can't trust it. I remember listening to that back in college, man. That was, <laughs> man, <laughs> bro, that was so that was so powerful, man. Those songs were so powerful back in college, back when, you know, conscious hip-hop. You could just turn on the radio and hear it, man. That had, like, a big impact on us. We had the African medallions and the Malcolm X hats and Malcolm X jackets and T-shirts, things like that, man. So that was, I mean, that was... Right. That, that, now, that's totally different, man. Now they yes. got, it's different. <laughs> Now I've got vegan napkins and carrying toothpicks and, you know, kippy cloth thongs on and all kind of stuff, man. <laughs> oh, man. And it's even worse today, man, because you have social media. You s- <laughs> so it's, probably, it's probably not worse. It's probably that we're seeing it more because before you had to see it on TV. Mm. Now you can see it on your cell phone and it's on the computer and right. it's on big screen, the small screen, and, you know, and young grandmothers at, at 38 are talking about it. You know, you know, when you think of somebody's grandmother, man, you think 60, 70, 80 years old. <laughs> now they're younger. Yep, 32, man. I remember Chuck D talking about the 32-year-old grandmother, man. <laughs> She's in the club. Her, her daughter's 16 at home with a six-month-old or one-year-old, you know. so <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, hey. Absolutely. Well, look, if you're just if you're just tuning, we're speaking with the one and only Professor Griff of uh, the legendary hip hop group Public Enemy. And it's always an honor to, to have him on uh, have him on the show. Um, he's going to be uh, with Professor James Small. They're doing a double presentation uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, Saturday, February 14th, 2 mm-hmm. p.m. to 8 p.m. OK, it's um, called the God Essence. Two. And uh, it's taking place at, uh, I think I'm pronouncing this right, Vickers um, at 838. Vickers, yeah. Vickers, okay. 838 Cascade Avenue, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia. 
All right. Um, tickets are, um, you can buy tickets online. General admission is $20. Students with ID, $15. Children ages 12 to 17, only $10. Uh, at the door, uh, admission prices will be 25 for general admission, students with ID, $20, and children ages 12 to uh, 17, still $10. Uh, for more information, Patricia Patton at 323-929-7724, 323-929-7724. You can contact Professor Griff at 678-557-2919, 678-557-2919. You can also go to the website, the dot connection dot net, the dot D O T connection dot net. And they have more information there and uh, you can purchase your tickets uh, uh, there as well. We have this flyer on our Facebook fan page, the African history network, the African history network. So you can check it out there and we'll have it on our website uh, tomorrow, African history network dot com. Um, now, uh, Professor Griff, right before the break, we were talking about, um, being genuine when you share this type of information, especially dealing with uh, uh, God or, or what have you, to people who may not be used to the information that, that you're sharing with them. What, what, has, what has been your experience in, in sharing that type of information with different religious backgrounds? Well, you know, to be honest with you, I think me and Zaza on our Enemy Minds radio show that we do, mm -hmm. every Tuesday and Thursday, we kind of, you know, we kind of uh, deal with a myriad of different subjects, but when we talk about that particular subject, it, it, it's kind of confusing because a born and bred African from Africa mm -hmm. will, 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 will chime in, and he brings a whole different perspective. The average brother and sister born and bred in, in America, in, in the scratch Mississippi or Louisiana somewhere, <laughs> chimes in, and that question, <laughs> that question gets is so way off base, and you know com the, co the conversation is kind of convoluted and it gets kind of complicated. So, um, always, brother, just to answer your question directly, it is always met with uh, resistance, hostile resistance. Mm. Up in damn hell, on the blood of Jesus with an axe and a piece of baloney thrown at us, and from 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 Africans. And, you know, we get the fact that we, we may be too light with a different texture hair, and, um, you know, we forgot about uh, the brothers and sisters on the continent, and they don't look at us as African. One brother called me and told me, um, because of that conversation, he called me and basically told me he's an original man, he's original African. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, no, I'm from Africa, brother. I said, well, I am too. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. I said, well, what, what, what are you? I just got over here a little bit sooner than you got over here, and not by choice. Mm -hmm. You had the pleasure. You had the pleasure of taking uh, Delta Airlines. Right. I came over here. So come on, bro. <laughs> and at the same time, African people have been here thousands of years, even before the transatlantic slave trade. African people have been here for thousands of years, also. So you know, and 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 Wait, some. Yes, but, but, go ahead. I'm sorry, go on. Oh, and, and, and some continental Africans, because they were educated by Europeans, some of them don't know that also. And but when you turn or teach them that, and you try to teach them that some of our people were here prior to the continent being named Africa, then mm -hmm. the conversation gets really deep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Look at you. You think I hear you, brother. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I hear you. What, what did you say? I hear you thinking. I said, I oh, hear no, 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 no. I hear you, man, because I, brother, you know, I, I, I just had Dr. David M. Hotep on last week, and I've interviewed him a number of times, you know, so we know we've been here, man, at least 50,000 years. So, um, yeah, yeah. So that's I. That's a small cheat number. You that you can play that as a crap game. That's that's a cheap number. We the original yeah. people. We the Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. We were here when the two tonic plates were together. You see what I'm saying? Prior right. to this place being called Africa, we were here. We mm -hmm. walked on this earth, this, this land before that they call America. So this ain't our first time here. Right, right. Absolutely. Now, to the Johnny come lately that's coming into this conversation that want to read a book given to us by our slave master's children, they may get caught up into that childish third grade kind of argument. Mm -hmm. But it's simple when you actually see the different continents and how they shape and how they all fit into one land mass. Then it's right. impossible to have called ourselves Africans at that particular point because it was no Africa. Right. 
Right, right. We, we use different terminology. And then also from, from, from my research and talking to different scholars, we didn't have one name for the continent also. You know, so we named exactly. different regions. Yeah, we named different regions of the continent. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. So these, these concepts, when you have the conversation about the, the God essence, then you mm-hmm. have to go, you probably have to go tribe by tribe. <laughs> yeah. In, in this particular perspective, you come And the reason why I'm saying that, good brother, I'm not trying to say that to confuse the issue. I say that because they took different tribes and brought us here. So yes. we don't know who we talk to. Mm-hmm. So this is why I say we have to come and, and, and whatever we're given, whatever tool we're given. And, it, and the English language inhibited us from expressing ourselves and, and talking to, to, to the soul of black folks. Right. right. You know, we, we're talking to the head right now. Right. We, we're trying to talk to their intellect, their, their, um, their minds, um, their, their ability to go back and remember and study history. But, what, but, but the conversation I want to have that day, I want to appeal to the soul of black folks. Okay. Okay, absolutely, absolutely. All right, mm-hmm. um, absolutely. Okay, we got about a minute left here. Let people know, how can they, do you have a website where people can get your DVDs, or right. are you on Facebook, Twitter? Tell us that information. Well, they can contact me directly. Just by calling me, 678-557-2919. My number is 678-557-2919. Myself and Zaza Ali, we do a radio show called Enemy Minds Radio, and you can look us up on Facebook, Enemy Minds Radio on Facebook. And, of course, um, every Tuesday and Thursday on, in, on Blog Talk Radio forward slash Minds Matter. It's Minds Matter on the Blog Talk Radio network, and the name of our show is Enemy Minds. And, of course, they can email me at professorgrifpe at gmail.com. Professorgrifpe at gmail.com. All right. Well, yes, sir. You know, it's always a pleasure to uh, to talk to you, brother. I will be there February fourteenth, man. I'll be I'll be happy to get out of the snow and get into some. Oh, snow, man. <laughs> <laughs> so look, man. Go ahead. Any excuse to get out of the snow? But I see you. Go ahead, good brother. <laughs> well, look, it's always good to be with you and uh, Professor Small, man. It'll be good to see Zaza Ali again. So we'll talk to you soon, okay. man. You have a good night, okay? All right, you take care, good brother. And tell Lucretia I said peace. <laughs> okay, brother. All right, hold up. All, All right, right, family. That was Professor Griff of uh, Public Enemy, legendary hip hop group Public Enemy. All right, look. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk some more about uh, Dr. Carter G. Woodson and some of the history of uh, Black History Month. Uh, you listen to the Michael M. Hotel show on the Empowerment Radio Network with Knowledge Is Power. We'll be back in a few minutes. Welcome back to the Michael M. Hotep Show on the Empowerment Radio Network, where knowledge is power. All right, if you're just tuning in, we were speaking with uh, Professor Griff of uh, Public Enemy uh, right before the break. We want to uh, give a shout-out to the affiliate radio stations that carry the Michael M. Hotep Show, WCBQ 1340 AM in Oxford, North Carolina, WHNC 890 AM in Henderson, North Carolina, WBOK 1230 AM in New Orleans, Louisiana, W1010 AM in Baltimore, Maryland. Also download the uh, TuneIn radio app to your Android phone, your iPhone, your BlackBerry, your tablet, and search for Empowerment Radio Network, Empowerment Radio Network, or go to TuneIn.com, TuneIn.com, and search for Empowerment Radio Network to listen to the show. So to remind everybody, we're here Monday through Friday, 10 p.m. to 12 midnight Eastern Standard Time. I know some people thought my show had been taken off the air because Roland Martin is on at 10 a.m. I used to be on at 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. No, I'm still on the network. Let them know, calm down, step, get down off the ledge, okay? Everything's going to be all right. We're on Monday through Friday, 10 p.m. to 12 midnight Eastern Standard Time, okay? You can also visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We have information there about the Michael M. Hotep Show, the links to how to listen, and um, all that information is there also. And on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. Now, um, we're going to get into the story about the um, the uh, new app uh, for African-American children. We're going to get into that in a minute. But I wanted to uh, revisit the story about the um, Howard University Middle School. Okay? Now, you know, we talked about this uh, Monday and... Well, Friday and Monday we talked about this, but um, allegedly you had 
the principal at Howard University Middle School of Mathematics and Science allegedly gave pink slips to three social studies teachers because they were teaching um, African and African American history uh, that uh, went beyond the curriculum. Okay, now the Washington Post reported yesterday that the NAACP, uh, the D.C. chapter of the NAACP, has begun investigating the termination of uh, these three social studies uh, teachers. Uh, Howard University Middle School it sits on the campus of Howard University in Washington, D.C., the HBCU. All right, now, Akusa Ali, who's the president of the NAACP chapter, uh, NAACP D.C. chapter, um, she said the preliminary finding is that uh, there were uh, that the three teachers were not discharged for teaching Black history? Okay, uh, but nevertheless, nevertheless, she said the civil rights group is concerned about how the teachers were treated and about other issues connected to the overall quality of the education received by the middle school students. The announcement. Uh, of the NAACP investigation came hours after students at the charter school staged a protest and gave school administrators a list of demands, including their priority, um, the, the, including their priority, which was new social studies will be treated with respect. School officials did not respond to requests for comment, and the teachers could not be reached on Monday. Now, Adila Bilal, who was the president of Parents in Action which is a parent group at the at the middle school. She said that the social studies teachers came to the group on January 22nd and said they were planning to resign. Adila Bilal said the reason the teachers gave was that they wanted to introduce more African history into a curriculum that focuses heavily on Greek and Roman history, but they claimed the administration did not support them. One teacher said that she had been written up for a lesson she gave about former mayor Marion Barry near the time of his death. Okay, now this is in Washington D.C. and Marion Barry Marion Barry was the mayor of Washington D.C. All right, uh, Adila Bilal goes on to say that teachers uh, had planned to resign uh, this past Friday so they could stay long enough. Uh, to uh, help students meet the, well, this coming Friday, I should say. Uh, they plan to resign this coming Friday so they can help students meet the Feb February 2nd deadline to apply to high school through the citywide enrollment lottery. In the meantime, the parents resolved to hire a mediator to help the teachers and, it, and administrators work out the dispute. But early last week, administrators asked the teachers to leave immediately. Okay, now the charter school, the charter middle school is on the campus of Howard University, as we said. The middle school students gathered in the university's main quad at about 11 a.m. on Monday. This was yesterday and formed a circle. Some students held up a poster that stated, quote, they don't care about us, end quote. Others held up Pan-African flags, the red, black, and green. And yes, the power of a public enemy. Uh, in honor of the middle school students who were protesting. Now, news of the demonstration spread on Twitter using the hashtag uh, MS2 protests. Okay, that's uh, math, science, two protest, the number two, MS2 protests. And many people online encourage students to stand up for their rights. News of the demonstration, uh, no, sorry, Angelique Blackman, the middle school's chief academic officer, is uh, new to the school this year. She's basically, she's the principal, like the principal, but her official title is Chief Academic Officer. And when you look at charter schools, I've done work with charter schools in the past uh, from the previous companies I helped manage. So they have fancy titles like that, Chief Academic Officer, what have you, okay? Um, school parents said they confronted her twice last week asking how and why the teachers left so abruptly. Quote, we just want to know, end quote, said Dorothy Lowry, whose daughter is in the sixth grade. In particular, she says she wants to know what is in the social studies curriculum. Quote, these are African-American kids. They should learn African-American history, end quote, she said. Lowry said the teachers had been forced to leave the school in the middle of the day and were given termination papers in front of the students. Quote, my daughter came home very upset, end quote, she said. 
In a statement, the D.C. Public Charter School Board said the public school charter schools, quote, are allowed to to the are, are allowed the sole discretion on on specific academic decisions, including the hiring and termination of their staff and teachers, end quote. The board said it, it uses a, quote, variety of methods, including reports an, uh, analysis and site visits to ensure that public charter schools are providing quality. education uh, providing quality educational opportunities to their students and are complying with the law end quote okay now what's interesting is that this is taking place during black history month african-american history month here you have african-american students who many of us say don't want to learn their history they're protesting saying we want to know our history Imagine that, okay? We we posted uh, we posted this article last night on our fan page, the African History Network, the African History Network. Check it out. NAACP investigating teacher departures at Howard University Middle School. All right. Um, on the other side of the break, we'll get into some of the history of Black History Month. We'll continue that discussion. Now, the BlackHomeschool.com, the BlackHomeschool.com had a very interesting article entitled "Meet Amika," A M E K A. New app with positive message for black kids. Okay, and this is by Crystal Crossman. The blackhomeschool.com has some very good articles. If you want to homeschool your children, and that's something that we have to do, we have to transition them out of the current school system and, and go into homeschooling and private schools, independent schools, because this school system was never designed to educate our children. Now, the article says there are many different apps that children can play with that are fun and educational, such as apps that are put out by PBS and Nickelodeon, okay? Now there is a new app on the block that is educational and inspirational for African-American children everywhere. It is a storybook game where there are a series of characters and adventures along the way. The main character is Amika Love, A-M-E-K-A, -A, Amika Love, who is trying to get to Crystal Mountain. Okay, she brings kids on a colorful journey that teaches them about life and have a little fun along the way. But we're going to continue this on the other side of the break. You listen to the Michael M. Hotep show on the Empowerment Radio Network with Knowledge is Power. Give us a call, 888-669-2281, 888-669-2281. We want to hear from you if you have a question or comment. Welcome back to the Michael M. Hotep Show on the Palmer Radio Network. Okay, that is The World is Changing by Arrested Development. The World is Changing by Arrested Development. Uh, visit their website, ArrestedDevelopmentMusic.com, ArrestedDevelopmentMusic.com. Okay, give us a call, 888-669-2281, 888-669-2281. We want to hear from you. We want to find out what does your child's school teach them about African history and African American history? And we know that this is African American History Month. So what does your child's school teach them about African history and African American history? And you know, last night um, I asked a question. We talked about um, Lift Every Voice and Sing, the National Black Anthem. I think yesterday with this date in African American history, that was one of the facts. Um, and we talked about James Weldon Johnson a little bit. Um, and do in, at your child's school, do they still teach them the black national anthem lift every voice and sing because we, we were taught that when i was coming up in school do they teach that to our children today give us a call 888-669-2281 we want to hear from you 888-669-2281 all right now back to this article meet amika new app with positive message for black kids this is from the blackhomeschool.com the blackhomeschool.com all right now there are um there are many different issues that come up while Amika is running through the story that she is telling, okay? And Amika Love is the main character in the story, African-American uh, girl. Throughout the story, children are asked to interact using a variety of skills. There are some that figured out using math, shapes, and colors, and others that require the use of critical thinking and problem solving. On her journey to Crystal Mountain, the main character shows the the children playing a lot of new experiences. 
the, the main character uh, shows the children playing uh, a lot of new experiences such as yoga and teaches them about chakras. Chakras are the energy centers of the body, the seven energy centers of the body, the chakras. Okay, It is um, not your typical children's storybook game, but it is fun for the kids and keeps their minds running the entire time. Now, the app features a lot of different interactive play scenes where children can tap on certain objects that they see. It also helps a child with vocabulary and reading as the story is written on the bottom of the screen. They have to read it in order to figure out what Amika needs to continue on with her journey. Uh, they have the ability to use skills and they may not, um, they have the ability to use skills that they may not have thought that they had in order to solve problems that may come along. All right. Now, the main demographic for this game is uh, children ages two to nine years old. OK, it's a lot of fun for the younger children because of the shapes, colors and sounds. The older kids will like it because they have control over the story and what happens when certain problems arise. One of the main goals of the game is to teach children empowerment to use their own minds to be able to figure things out. Okay, so that's great. And uh, we'll post this article uh, on our fan page, The African History Network. Uh, it's available on Android phones. The app is $3.99. Now, there was, I, when I posted this information on our fan page before, there was one, oh, the app should be free. Okay, so I asked them, well, where's your free app that you designed? And they didn't have a free app that they designed. And I'm like, $3.99. Okay, so are we saying that our children are not worth investing $3.99 in one time? It's a one-time investment. It's not every month. Okay? But, I mean, we spend, we, we waste money on all types of nonsense. Uh, lottery, marijuana, at the club, alcohol, weaves. Okay, but when it comes to something like this, to invest in the education of your children, all of a sudden there's a problem. Oh, it should be free. Okay, now if you just don't have the money, that's understandable. But when we waste money on other things, and then you know, because I the question I always ask is why why do Negroes buy what they want and beg for what they need? That's the question I always ask. All right, now. Um, African American History Month. Okay, we talked about this some last night. We talked about Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Uh, we know he was the co-founder of the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. He was born December 9th, 1875. He was born to former slaves. He was born 10 years after slavery ended. Okay, brilliant scholar. Um, he got a PhD uh, from uh, Harvard in 1912 in American history. He was the second African American to graduate with a PhD from Harvard, first African American of slave descent, because Dr. W.B. Du Bois was born to free parents. Okay, uh, he taught at Howard University, uh, and he was um, uh, the dean of uh, the School of Liberal Arts at Howard University. He also uh, taught it. Uh, he also became the dean of uh, the School of Liberal Arts at West Virginia Collegiate Institute also, all right? And he decided to uh, create the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, is what it was created in 1915. He, uh, because in 1915, he went to a, um, um, a conference in Philadelphia, if I remember correctly, it was in Philadelphia. It was commemorating the 50-year anniversary of the emancipation of the slaves. Okay, last night I said the Emancipation Proclamation, but it wasn't the Emancipation Proclamation. It was actually the emancipation of the slaves, meaning them being freed in 1865. Okay, and they were freed because of the 13th Amendment, December of 1865, the 13th Amendment. Okay, um, and there were, it was a three-week conference and they had all types of exhibitions on different aspects of African-American life and, and accomplishments and what they had accomplished in the past 50 years. So he got the idea that there needed to be a uh, organization or an institution that recorded the history and the contributions of African and Africans on the continent of Africa. And he felt that if this history was not recorded that it would be lost forever, okay? 
So this is why he and, uh, and four other people uh, created the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. Today is known as the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. Okay, and you can go to uh, their website asalh.org, asalh.org. That's their official website, Asala. In Detroit, they have uh, events going on at the Charles H. Wright Museum each day this week, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, the event last night got canceled. I should be there tomorrow night. I'll definitely be there Friday. Friday at the Charles H. Wright Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, 315 East Warren Avenue in Detroit. They're doing a screening of the documentary 500 Years Later, 500 Years Later. So in that documentary, you have Lefeketi Asante, who I got a chance to meet this past August uh, at the um, annual gathering of the African Village in Atlanta. Um, you have uh, Dr. Milana Karinga, who's the co-founder of Kwanzaa. He's the co-founder of Kwanzaa because the, there were members of us organization um, who founded Kwanzaa. He did not find Kwanzaa, he did not create Kwanzaa on his own. He's a co-founder of Kwanzaa. Uh, and you have some other scholars in that documentary also. Fantastic documentary, 500 years later. But they're doing a screening at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. It's like 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. this Friday. Okay, I think it's a free event also, so come check that out. I'll be there as well. I'm on the panel. Actually, there's a panel afterwards, myself and Malika Kenny of the Black Food Security Network, and we're doing the questions and answers afterwards, okay? Now, um, okay, look, we're coming up on the break. Uh, we'll continue this on the other side of the break. You listen to the Michael M. Hotel Empowerment Radio Network, where knowledge is power. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to the Michael M. Hotep show. All right. <laughs> that looks like more day in the time. But that's uh, Mark Ronson featuring Bruno Mars, Uptown Funk. But it, it looks like more day in the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some people don't even know who more day in the time is. All right. Teach the young ones. Okay. Google more day in the time, please. All right. <laughs> okay. Look, right before the break. We were talking about some of the history of uh, African American History Month. We were talking about Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Okay, now um, we know that he's he was uh, one of the co-founders of the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. Um, he was a prolific author. Also, his most celebrated famous book was The Mis Miseducation of the Negro in 1933. Okay, now uh, Dr. Woodson uh, felt that by informing the American people of the achievements of African Americans and African people in the United States and on the continent of Africa, he hoped that uh, it would not only build self-esteem among African Americans, but also lessen prejudice among whites. See, this is why our history has to be taught in all the schools across the country. Now, we need to transition our children out of the schools. We aren't going to be able to transition all of them out, but we need to start transitioning our children out of the schools. But but all the children, different ethnic groups, they need to know, uh, they need to have some basic uh, African history, African-American history, because African people were here first before there was anybody else. We were here when Asians came in 3000 BC, Asians and Africans intermixed and they pr produced the people known as Native Americans. And we were here when Europeans come. In fifteen, in the fifteen, uh, 15, early fifteen hundreds, uh, when when the Spanish come, when they start taking Africans into the territory known as South Carolina in the fifteen twenties, when uh, they come to Jamestown, Virginia, sixteen oh seven. If you read the um, first Americans with Africans documented evidence by Dr. David M. Hotep, he talks about Captain John Smith, and Captain John Smith uh, in Jamestown, Virginia, he talks about how he was captured by a group of black Indians. Okay. Uh, we were here when the pilgrims come in, in 1620, uh, sailing, sailing from Plymouth, England, on the uh, Mayflower, and you had 102 passengers and 36, uh, 102 passengers and uh, 26 uh, crewmen, and there were only 35 of those 102 passengers were pilgrims. Okay, the others they were looking for fame and fortune and uh, wanted to acquire land and, and and wealth, things like this. Okay, um, so this is all. Uh, what Dr. Carter G. Woodson uh, was trying to do, and this was the uh, intent of uh, African American uh, History Month or Negro History Week. Now, um, in a Journal of Negro History article, Dr. Woodson said that prejudice 
is, quote, the logical result of tradition, the inevitable outcome of thorough instruction to the effect that the Negro has never contributed anything to the progress of mankind, end quote. And he predicted, however, that the that, quote, the achievements of the Negro properly set forth will crown him as a factor in early human progress and a maker of modern civilization, end quote. OK, um, the now. He chose the second week in February for Negro History Week because it, it can't be, because it contains the birth dates of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douay, February 12th for Abraham Lincoln and February 14th for Frederick Douglass. Now, African-Americans have been celebrating uh, Frederick Douglass's birthday since the 1890s, and they have been celebrating uh, Abraham Lincoln's birthday since um, basically in the, in the slavery, okay? Uh, because they saw Abraham Lincoln as an integral part of the Civil War leading to the 13th Amendment leading to, to African-Americans being free, okay? So you already had celebrations going on during that second week in February. So he inserted this new celebration into that period of time to ride that, wide, uh, ride that wave, all right? Uh, this is why Black History Month or African-American History Month is in February, okay? It has nothing to do with it being the shortest month. Has nothing to do with the being coldest month of the year. He did not ask permission from Europeans to do this. This is not something that Europeans gave us. This is something that we created ourselves. Okay, it's very, very important uh, to understand this. Now, some people say, well, um, you know, Morgan Freeman. You know, in, in the presentation I do, I play the clip that, from an interview that Morgan Freeman did on 60 Minutes, uh, where he says that. Um, um, uh, black history is American history, and and uh, you're going to relegate my history to a month, and you know all type of nonsense like this. And um, what what people don't know is that um, first of all, it was never designed to be the only time of the year that we celebrate our history. Okay, it was designed to be. It, it wasn't. I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. It wasn't. It was never designed to be the only time of the year that we study our history. OK, it was a celebration of our history and uh, to celebrate that we're still here to uh, remember the past, look forward to the future, uh, things like this. It was never meant to be the only time that we study our history. OK, number one. Number two, for school children, uh, Dr. Woodson felt that this should be a time of the year when people um, uh, when, when the school children show what they know also about their history. OK, now what a lot of people don't know is that other ethnic groups have monthly cultural celebrations also. OK, so May is Jewish American History Month. September 15th to October 15th is National Hispanic History Month. March is Irish American History Month. May is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. May is also Haitian Heritage Month. November is in History Month because, see, they have uh, Native Americans and, well, Hispanics have two of them. No, November is Native American History Month. September 15th to October 15th is also Hispanic Heritage Month. So you have National Hispanic History Month, September 15th to October 15th. You also have Hispanic Heritage Month, September 15th to October 15th. Uh, October is German American and also Polish American Heritage Month. Okay, now uh, I deal with all these in my presentation dealing with the history uh, of Black History Month because I do I did deep research. It's like three years of research for that presentation, maybe a little more. Okay, so it's like deep research that I did on that presentation. Um, if you go to Answers.com, Answers.com, and you can search for. Uh, monthly cultural celebrations. You can look up Jewish American History Month, things like this. Also go to brownielocks.com, B-R-O-W-N-I-E, brownielocks.com, information in, in, the, in the full presentation. Um, but they show you, Brownie Locks will show you uh, different monthly celebrations, weekly celebrations, but they show you these cultural celebrations. They also have links to 
uh, the websites of organizations that are like the governing bodies of these different monthly celebrations, okay? Because I've gone and looked at all these. I've gone and looked, uh, looked at all of them. And these monthly celebrations are also recognized by the U.S. Congress. Now, what's interesting is when you study the history of these other monthly cultural celebrations, you find that they all started after 1976. Why is that important? Because 1976 is when Negro History Week becomes Black History Month and becomes celebrated nationally. It becomes a national monthly celebration, and it was recognized by uh, President Gerald Ford. So these, so these other ethnic groups had, and they said they wanted a monthly cultural celebration also. OK, so they embrace their history and they embrace their monthly celebrations. We run away from it because we don't understand the history of it. And we think it's something Europeans gave to us, but we created it ourselves. OK, using the second principle of Kwanzaa self-determination, Kuji Chagalia. OK, even before we called it Kuji Chagalia. OK, so that's just a little brief history. We'll talk about some more of this tomorrow night. Uh, visit, uh, visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. My full presentation dealing with the history of Black History Month is there. It's a four and a half hour presentation. It's going to blow you away. She's African American Celebrate Black History Month is what it's called. Also visit our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. We have a lot of information there for you. Also, and uh, on our website, we also have the Hidden Colors Bundle Pack. You get all three installments for one low price. Three of my DVD presentations there as well. A recommended reading list. A lot of information for you, okay? Remember, we're here Monday through Friday, uh, 10 p.m. to 12 midnight Eastern Standard Time.